Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So being the last talk, I hope my topic about recycling can uh, help recover your energy. So uh, my talk uh, today is about recovery of metals from waste smartphone screen. So this is a smartphone screen, everybody has one. <laughs> Using uh, Aspergillus niger media, it's a microorganism. My name is Hong Ho Chen from uh, National Tsinghua University in Taiwan. Okay, uh, actually the very uh, beginning or motivation of this study is I used to do a lot of manufacturing. So uh, since 100 years, especially after World War II, uh, mankind has uh, manufactured so many things and uh, actually very efficient. So my question is where did they go? Many people are asking this. So sooner or later, uh, we all people will be buried by all the waste if we don't uh, deal with this uh, uh, manufactured and uh, used products. Uh, one scenario is uh, we are here, 20, uh, 2025, around here. So daily, we produce six, uh, over 6 million tons waste every day. It's not per year, it's every day. So it's a astronomical number. So the talk is about uh, a little bit introduction, or probably you feel interesting, about the why smartphone and then the experiment of how we uh, recover the metals. And the leaching process itself needs to be optimized and uh, small concluding remarks. Yes, smartphone is actually now today is a, a cell phone with an integrated small computer. Especially during the COVID-19, we proved that a smartphone is uh, indispensable. We don't know how to live, how to laugh, how to cry, how to work without smartphone. And this annual production of smartphone is now 1.8 billion per year, last year. And it's still increasing because there are many potential markets uh, growing. Now, of course, uh, it's uh, so divided by manufacturer and uh, divided by end markets. Of course, uh, proportional wise, the, uh, China is the largest market with over 400 millions, and India is, of, of course, picking up very fast. Now, in the smartphone, actually, we use a lot of metals uh, and other chemical elements. 70 of 83 stable chemical elements now found in the smartphones. It's an astonishing uh, uh, numbers. And actually, we also use a lot of metals in the smartphone, although we cannot recognize. 62 metals used. And the, actually, the metals are the secrets why the smartphones are smart. Um, a, a group of metals called uh, uh, rare earth metals, including many funny names, okay, they uh, provide these uh, smart functions for the smartphone. A single iPhone normally contains eight different rare earth metals. Not normal metals, but rare earth metals, eight in normal uh, cell phone. Uh, actually, 16 to 17 rare earth metals are commonly used or often used. This, uh, uh, this uh, picture is very nice. Um, you can see about the touch screen display, the phone speakers, vibration unit, electronics, battery, casing. In each part, they utilize different metals. I would like to emphasize this one, indium. Without indium, this screen is not touch screen. It's not functional. And also without this uh, funny, uh, uh, elements, I don't know how to pronounce them. Uh, no colors can be uh, vividly uh, displayed today. So these critical metals are so rare that in use uh, of the 1.8 billion quantity of cell phones, uh, you can imagine this sooner or later, all these known resources will be dig out. And um, so if we don't recycle it, the cell phone is going to be impossible or it's going to be very, very expensive. 
So due to the geological scarcity, or it's also associated with some geopolitical issues, uh, it's getting very dangerous if we don't recycle these uh, metals from smartphones. Now this display has two groups. One is LCD, the other one is OLED. LCD is still uh, the majority in quantity. So we, in, in, the, in this study, we deal with LCD. Now, the, for example, the touch screen, how it works. Uh, LCD is a, it looks like a glass, but glass itself is not a conductive one. So basically it has been coated with a conductive uh, material called uh, indium tin oxide. I don't know how it is, but it is this one. This conductive grid acts as a capacitor with a very small electrical charge. So when we touch the screen, uh, you take the uh, uh, charges away to your hand. So this screen will register this drop of the small uh, uh, voltage and uh, orders the following uh, actions to take. So this is how the touch screen working. So every secret is lies in this uh, in use of this indium tin oxide. Why this material, ask the material scientist. They will tell you this is a very sensitive, stable, uh, reliable, etc. Et but tin, uh, the, the indium is there. And it's only, only one, irreplaceable. The high value metals in smartphone include, say, silver, indium, so on. So this indium is per kilo, uh, 600 US dollars. Uh, it's as expensive as, uh, as, expensive as uh, silver. So if, as we mentioned, this uh, is potentially a lot of problems, we don't uh, recycle them. The recycling process need to be a new metal resource, uh, metal source. It's uh, promising for the environment if we don't recycle them. And the method itself should be efficient, sustainable, and cost-effective. Now the experiment. Um, first, we collect some uh, smartphone from the local market. It's easy, a lot. And then we crush them, ground them, and, uh, and into powders and, 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 and sieve to make fine powders. Then we use uh, agua regia to dissolve all metals uh, to determine what metals are in there and uh, for analysis. And of course, we send to ICB OES for analysis. Then we found in a typical uh, or in such a collection of the uh, waste, we found the uh, top 20 uh, in quantity metals contained in the, um, in the smartphone screen. Uh, the top quantity is copper followed by aluminum, etc. And uh, notably is uh, the number nine, indium. So the indium is occupying the ninth position. It is using, it is uh, being used a lot for the touch screen. So if you have large screens, uh, you use more indium. So indium is indeed an important element. Now, how we recover it uh, with microbial spent media? We tried the three microbes. The first one is called uh, acid acid thiobacillus ferrooxidans. Uh, or in abbreviation is called AF. This is a bacteria, uh, they can convert ferrous iron into ferric iron, and, and they, they grow from there. And this ferric iron is a strong oxidant and they can cause metal dissolution. So we use this ferric uh, to, uh, to, to, to dissolve the, the, the metals from the waste powders. So this is the equation how it works. And uh, okay, this is the first one. The second one is called uh, acetyltheobacillus thiooxidans, or TT. It uses sulfur as energy source, and in growing, they produce sulfuric acid. And as we all know, this acid can uh, dissolve metals as well. And the third microbe uh, is the one called uh, Aspergillus niger. It used uh, different carbon sources, such as uh, sucrose, as a normal common one. 
and it produces organic acids such as citric acid, malic acid, and so on. And these uh, uh, organic acids, weak acid, however, it can also uh, dissolve metals. So these three uh, microbes we used, uh, and uh, actually there are two kinds of process. One is very intuitive, so-called the direct lesion. So you simply apply the microbes uh, to the waste, mix them together, and see what happens. Uh, this can also uh, uh, dissolve some metals in the waste. But then we found this is not a very efficient uh, way to do it. The other option is so-called indirect leaching. It's called a two-step process. So we separate the growth period and the uh, uh, recycling period. So in the first phase, we uh, let the microbial biomass uh, grow in the absence of metal waste. Just let them grow. And when they grow, uh, we collect the spent media. When they grow, they use media. And when they, after their growth, we collect the media, but not the microbes themselves. We use the media to, uh, to, to recycle the waste. So this is a so-called indirect lesion, two-step process. The advantage of this is uh, that the biomass and the uh, waste metals are not mixed uh, with each other, and it's better for recycling, for separation, and also for uh, better efficiency. And the higher waste concentration can be applied as compared to the one-step uh, process. So this is uh, then we use the second one. So in summary, this is a growth of medium first, and then we let the microbe uh, grow, then we collect the supernatant, as so actually you spend media, and then we put the metal waste uh, into it to dissolve the metals from the waste. Uh, spend media of two bacteria, so TT and TF, and one fungal, so it's kind of, it's, this is AN, Aspergillus niger, and the smartphone uh, LCD powder is been uh, put into the uh, spam media in uh, this condition. Now we try AF as this one and, a and TT and uh, AN. So roughly uh, you can see uh, different metals. These are 20 metals here. And different columns is uh, standing for different time uh, applied. So of course, longer time, normally uh, we can have more uh, metals uh, uh, dissolved. But in this experiment, we found actually uh, in 24 hours, we have some uh, good results. However, in the following experiments, we still use uh, 96 hours uh, just for research purpose. And uh, as we can see, if we apply this uh, TF, uh, five metals can be uh, dissolved 100%. However, the, uh, the indium is very concerned one, uh, it's uh, less than half been dissolved. And for TT, uh, generally speaking, uh, less uh, than 100% been uh, dissolved. However, the indium can be dissolved more. And for Aspergillus niger, generally speaking, uh, many metals can be dissolved up to a higher percentage. So in, the, in this study, we then uh, adopt uh, a spatula sniper for, uh, for further study uh, for optimization. Three parameters are selected. One is the uh, temperature. The second is the uh, shaking speed. Uh, the third one is uh, pulp density, how much waste we put into a uh, fixed amount of the uh, spent media. And this is a first results about the temperature. The effect is very mild, uh, from 30 degree up to 60 degree, all provide similar uh, results. So in the following experiment, we use a very uh, moderate choice, it's 40 degree, so we don't need to input too much heat as uh, energy. Then the second parameter is the agitation, to provide more uh, agitation and, uh, and mix uh, with the waste. So we see that uh, more agitation, uh, in some cases, uh, provide better results. So we will take uh, 150 uh, RPM. 
And in the final uh, parameter is the pulp density. Uh, it's been how much uh, waste can be uh, dissolved uh, with its fixed amount of spent media. Uh, up to five gram per 100 milliliter uh, can all be dissolved uh, to the similar uh, satisfaction. So this is a final concluding remarks. Uh, there's drastic increase of smartphone waste, uh, no doubt. It's going to be more and more. And uh, microbial spam media being options with uh, uh, metal recovery. And this Aspergillus niger is a potential one. It can uh, recover five metals, aluminum, including uh, tungsten and so on, 100%. And three major precious metals, especially the indium, can be leached uh, up to uh, more than 90%. And this is a very uh, promising, sustainable one. So with that, I appreciate your time and uh, the questions. Thank you. Okay, then. Have to.